Business again? Yes, I do. Okay. Hold on, I have to get two places. People Salon, what is it? Public called? Voice Public Salon. Public Voice Salon. And Braid and Braid and. Okay, quite on the text. Okay. Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. It's a pleasure uh, to welcome to the program a friend of mine, a personal friend of mine, and a friend of uh, MNN's. He has a program here at MNN, and that's John Braden. And he's mm -hmm. uh, had for a long while the program, the Public Voice Salon, mm -hmm. which was really an interesting program he had out of New Jersey where people got together and talked about the human condition and assorted matters. He's an academic in the sense that he studied literature. Mm -hmm. And he's got an appreciation of the English or of language mm -hmm. and of literature and so forth. And we're going to mention the fact, if you don't mean, John, we'll you're, you're about to have a program with, a, with, a, with a, 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 a man who's legend in terms of understanding literary mm -hmm. criticism, um, Howard, uh, or Harold Bloom. Yes. Harold, that's Harold. a good name. Harold. I like that <laughs> name, Mr. Bloom, and I <laughs> look forward to meeting you, baby, sometime. Yes. But he, and he's also uh, got a, uh, a, a family background and a personal background with the film industry. And so he's got a very interesting story to tell and uh, at this particular time. And so, John, it's so good to see you. Welcome oh. to Conversations and uh, yes. to you and in, in, in your extension, uh, Claudia, who does a great job in helping you put that film, that program together oh, yes. with increasing quality, I'd like to say. Yeah. Yes. So welcome aboard uh, the oh. Good Ship Conversations. Right. It's always good to be back with you, uh, Harold, in a conversation, whether we're on the air or off the air. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy being in a dialogue with mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Mr. could we talk talking about Howard uh, Harold Bloom, sure. major literary critic, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and you're going to be doing a program with him yes. in a couple of weeks or something, I think. Well, I, I made an existential choice okay. to major in English when I was in college. Yeah. And okay. I got a degree in English literature uh, from Fordham University. Oh, good. Not yeah. too far from here, just a few yeah, blocks right. away. Uh -huh. We're in uh, Midtown Manhattan here at the MNN studio on 59th. And so I, anyway, so yeah. I studied writers like D.H. Lawrence. Uh -huh. And, 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 and uh, I also read Freud, which was part of the program in literature. I studied psychoanalysis and literature. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, so these are my heroes, you know, people like Leo Tolstoy and yeah. Dostoevsky and great writers like this who really liberated me uh -huh. and made me think about the human condition, yeah. made me think about possibilities yeah. for myself. I think literature really does matter. Yeah. Uh, writers like Jane Austen, yeah. Pride and Prejudice, yeah, yeah. which, by the way, Pride and Prejudice, I saw the movie version. Yeah. Before I read the book, do you think some movies are more given, or books, let's say yeah, books, yeah. or literary works? Uh, let's just say one big division of the human society is male female. Do you think John mm. o Jane Austen is more inclined toward the female side, maybe? Well, is that the one with? Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> that's the one where there's the, all the women, and then there's a who's the protagonist, the man. Darcy. Darcy. Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy. And all the yes, ladies yes. seem to enjoy <laughs> that movie, very that that whole experience, right? You think there's a, uh, a, a bias on the part, a sexual bias on the part of the male and female parts of the human society in terms of literature and or uh, expressions of the human expression, uh, human experience. Maybe it's a sidebar that we need not go into, but you yeah. are in literary circles, yes. understanding it. And again, back to Harold uh, Bloom. He's a yes. major scholar and should be recognized as such, yeah. Yes. We were very excited to go up to New Haven, Connecticut and interview Harold You're Bloom. You're going to be the owner, at, yeah. at his home up in New Haven, Connecticut. Wonderful. He's uh, a major figure. I, that, I read his mm. bio. He's a major, major figure. Treat mm. him very mm. much respect. I guess you yes. don't have to be told that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're my mentor in terms of uh, talk shows and yeah, I'm just so. a talk show guy. He's a major scholar, and I recognize that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, look forward to You'll be putting yes. that on in the Voice Salon series? Sure. Okay, good. Are, yeah. you gonna, are you going to try and do it in one take, or are you going to try and do a lot of takes and put it together, edit it, or how are you going to approach it? We don't know. It? We'll just yeah. take it as it comes. I think I'm more excited about meeting Harold Bloom. Yes, right. Just having a conversation <laughs> right. with him and his wife and meeting my wife and the four of us just to... Just to be together. And nice and to meet you, Mr. Shakespeare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah. you know. If only uh, we could, yeah. Actually, you know, I'm reading his book now called yeah. um, 
uh, How to Read and Why. Yeah, right. This was I his think 2000 I know. Two thousand book, yeah, How to Read and Why. Yeah. And he says one reason we read literature yeah. and quality literature yeah, is right. because it gives us a sense of our own self. Right. It sure. augments the self. Sure. And gives you a stronger personality and feeling of who you are. Yeah. And uh, I think in a corporatized society, mm -hmm. we forget who we are. <laughs> We forget yeah. our past. We yeah. forget our memories. Mm -hmm. Everybody's so rush, 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 24-7, yeah. you know, overworked, overstressed. Mm -hmm. Literature is a place that we can just be and relax and remember who we are mm -hmm. and our better selves mm -hmm. and who we might become. And so I, I really believe in the possibilities of the arts in general. Uh -huh. And certainly literature is a part of the art world, yeah. but so is cinema. Yeah. So, right, is, so is movies, yeah, and they yeah. kind of overlap and intersect. When I teach writing, uh -huh. um, and I try to get my students excited about writing, mm -hmm. and many of them don't want to write, and they right. feel bored because they went to school systems that made it very, like a dull, dreary task, you know? I'm very critical yeah. of the way s education is today. Where Are you really? Teaching yeah. to the tests and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. very terrible. Yeah. So I, my young students come to me, and they just hate to write, and they... I try to get them over is that, that block. Is that a, you find that, right? See, it, I'm, not, it, I'm out of touch it, with there is, students there is at a, that there level. Is a, yeah. There is that fear of, 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 of writing, of, of self-expression that comes. That's because of school. It's because The school now is the enemy, the way it's done. If you it's done so? wrong. You absolutely. find that manifest find by the true. younger generation coming I, along, I or is that too they're, generalized? They're my students. Yeah. And I know. And uh -huh. I, but you see, a, a lot of it is social class based, though. Okay. Because I have taught at places like Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey. I'm not sure what that be means. Or poor be spoke, students be from the lower oh, okay, socioeconomic right. yeah. okay, classes, right. 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 poor right. black Latino kids, yeah. working class uh, student body mm -hmm. who came. They didn't go to elite schools. Yeah. They didn't go to. A, they didn't go to Yale and have Mr. Bloom as a professor. Right. right? They 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 had these kind of very cookie cutter curriculum teaching to the tests, boring way of, of learning. So they got turned off to yeah. the wonderful world of literature, of writing, of self-expression. Yeah. And, and my job as a teacher is to reignite that passion that was there. Yeah. Uh, little children, you see, even five-year-olds, you know, yeah. if you give them crayons and they'll color and they'll express themselves, and uh, it's a wonderful thing. Don't, don't talk to me about five-year-olds. Because I said, them. how yes, many times, yes. Rosalie okay. or jo Josiane, have I said, uh -huh, uh -huh. my favorite human beings, I think, are five-year-olds. Yes. They, they, abso they absolutely have no artifice whatsoever. Yes. Little children, uh. I mean, five-year-olds have no artifice. They're just beautiful. Yes. And they're honest. Yeah. They're just on a, and then they end up like us. Well, calculate. How does that trying happen? Trying to do what's yeah. the best bet, right, and right, how right. do you get an edge up, and how do you get money, and all those kind of things. But they're just like gorgeous. There's some people don't like children, you know. I know a couple people that don't even like little <laughs> children, and I just can't understand that because little children are just gorgeous. I'm yes. I'm a sucker for little children. Yeah. And puppy dogs. Yeah. Uh. Right too. But. Go ahead. I'm sorry. As a side. No, that's wonderful. But as a uh, personal so thing. So I, I think that we need to restructure and reframe the educational system yeah, to okay. um, accentuate the positive human qualities that we have. Creativity, love, empathy, yeah. compassion mm -hmm. for other people. Yeah. Uh, and literature, you can get those skills, let's say, or those behaviors or those capacities right. more than in a strictly technocratic education approach. Right, right. And I think that's the problem today. Well, it is, maybe, yeah. And, 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 and literature has been the means of store, the store of human knowledge is passed down mm. through the generation uh, and centuries through uh, literature by and large, you know. Let me tell you uh -huh. a story. Yes, Harold. please. Can I, I tell you? Tell me a story, <laughs> tell me a story, yes, yes. Once upon a time. Yeah, what that? Perfect starting. I that's a unique, <laughs> if you got that copyrighted, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Once upon a time, mm. I had a grandmother yeah. <laughs> named Doris Braden, yeah. who came from England yeah. when she was seven years old. She was rescued by a great actress in New York mm. named Blanche Walsh. Wow, she was, a, she was a star in her time. Blanche Walsh yeah. was America's version of Sarah Bernhardt. Wow. She was America's version of Eleanor Deuce. Whoa. So she was the top on Broadway, yeah. did very serious Theater All of this bespeaks your interest in theater Thank also you. that okay. we want to make sure we get to. Yeah, yeah. So here's the story that my grandmother, when she babysat for me as a little boy, she would tuck me into bed 
and she told me all the fairy tales. Yeah. She told me Cinderella, yeah. Little Red <coughs> Riding Hood, all those great stories. I think that I got my love of stories from my grandmother. And they all ended in everybody lived happily Happily ever, ever after. after. What would it be if we could have those stories out of our political situation currently? And at its best, Hollywood can give us that hope. Okay, so, now that's right? something that we're also going to talk See? about in this program Hollywood on film and the best. importance of film. Yeah. A, a, a movie like The Wizard of Oz, as corny as you might say, I there is an artistry yeah. to that. Absolutely. Home sweet home, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, that great, great male actor, yeah. Toto. He was wonderful. He <laughs> was really a good actor. Did you see how he wagged his right. tail? He did it all more. He was really, really oh, self-starting. Yeah, goodness. right, right, right. Now, I got a no. quick story from the other side of the family, Please. if I could drop in. Okay, that okay. relates to The Wizard of Oz. Okay, good. My great-grandmother on my mother's side, she was Hungarian. Yeah. Her name was Agnes Horza. She owned a Brazier and corset shop on 164th and Broadway. Wow, okay. And she was good friends with Mrs. Singer, who had the famous Singer Midget Troupe. I don't know that. I know the, the Singer. The they singer had a sewing machine. It was, this was another Mrs. Singer, singer who okay, was yeah. Hungarian. Uh -huh. And y you don't say midgets today, but back then they called them the Singer Midgets. Oh. They were little people. Oh, and really? And she brought them out into vaudeville, and they oh, would really? sing and dance on stage. So they got the contract for The Wizard of Oz well, to be the... the uh, the, mu the munchkins. munchkins. The munchkins. The munchkins. Yeah, yeah, I like okay. the munchkins. Yeah. So yeah. Mrs. Singer went to my grandmother and yeah. she said, "Would you make the brassiers and the corsets?" She got for the brassier. She got the brassier contract. Boy, if you had the, the world brassier <laughs> contract, you would be in the money, <laughs> would you not? Yeah. So mm. my grandmother remembers the the munchkins in their apartment in Washington Heights yes. being measured, you know, yeah, right, for right. the Wizard of Oz. But she was film. You had a that in a certain sense you were introduced to film in your on own family sides. background. On both yeah. sides of the right. family. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. On 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 the mother's side there's that story and there's also a story about my Aunt Mary uh -huh. who was neighbors to Elsa Lancaster. Wow. Oh she got great the Lancaster family. Uh, yeah. She was yeah. neighbor in Santa Monica, California. Yeah. Uh, Aunt Mary was married to my Uncle Larry who was a spy. He was a real government spy, U.S. spy. A, a spy in favor of the United States? Yes, in favor yes. of the U.S. He was behind the Iron Curtain he infiltrated the May Day Parade in Russia. Wow. And he was sitting on the reviewing stand. What, what, what time frame are you talking about? Cold War. Cold War. Cold 1930s War. through the so that, would be, that could have been a dangerous situation. He was yeah. he was there, and mm. he was having a conversation with H.G. Wells. Wow. <laughs> I'd like to. Have you got the tapes on that? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, We're looking right. into yeah. this. Yeah. And so Stalin found out that H.G. Wells was there, yeah. so he had Wells pulled over to sit next to him. Oh, wow. Okay. That was my Uncle Larry. Now, he was not really related to our family, but he married Aunt Mary. Mm -hmm. And Aunt Mary uh, was, uh, again, they were neighbors to Elsa Lancaster. And who was she married to, Elsa Lancaster? I can't I remember. Can't I can't remember. Think of his name. But Charles Lawton. Charles Lawton. Just to mention the lesser light. Just to yeah, throw yeah. <laughs> Charles Lawton. Yeah, right. They, they You're were, right. You're right. They were, yeah. they, they were neighbors. Yeah. But here's the funny story. I just heard this recently. Yeah from my Aunt Bobby in Bridgeport, Connecticut, because okay. she updates me on the family yeah. stories, okay. that um, Uncle Larry, who was this spy, uh -huh. was a good friend of George Sanders. Oh, good. He's an actor. He was an A-list actor yeah. in the 40s and 50s. And he always played these kind of mysterious yeah. parts, like spy-like characters, uh, very similar. What does A-list mean? A-list means the top level of Hollywood, like today, it would be Al Pacino yeah, right. and well, Robert De Niro. I, I, I should have known. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Betty, yeah. Betty Davis was. That been something yeah. I should have just picked up intuitively without having to ask you. I got to yeah. learn to do that That's more. That's fine. We're yeah, having a ahead. wonderful day. I love yeah. you, Harold. You well, know I love you. We, yeah, yeah. We, we, know. We, we, you know. But well, anyway, so so George Sanders was a big star in Hollywood. He was friends with Uncle Larry, and so when Uncle Larry married my aunt Mary, mm -hmm. George Sanders was his best man uh -huh, at their okay. wedding in Santa Monica. Yeah. And George Sanders was married to Zsa Zsa Gabor Another star. at the time. Yeah. She stood up the for Gabor my- The Gabor sisters, yeah. She stood up for my Aunt Mary. It's in the family of Gabors and Lawtons and that. You know, I wonder, is there something in the family tradition that does it? Or I don't know. How do we I account, think it is. How do we account some for the genius that comes out from time to time in literature or in any uh, form? I don't know. That's part a sidebar. Don't part of it. No, forget no. I said that. <laughs> that I, that's just going down a whole nother r rabbit hole, as well, it's Paul really and Gloria would say. Yeah. Uh, I like the rabbit hole 
comment because that's Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. So that brings mm. us back to literature. Okay, fine. fine and Bloom fine, talks a means. lot about Alice in Wonderland. He does. He uh, talk to us. You want to talk a little bit about him or not or whatever? We got a lot. We're, we want we're to in cover. Wonderland right now. Yeah. Harold. I mm. think we, when I'm with you, I'm in Wonderland. Mm. I don't know. We go down our, our dialogues. They they follow a path. Do we? Yeah. Real conversation. Yeah, is that this right? Is that yeah. We don't have talking points here. Mm. I'm not reading from a script, right? Nobody's tell, telling me what to say. I never have any idea what's going to come out of my <laughs> head when I talk. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what the hell is going to come out. You and were talking to a cab driver today. I did, and it, I left my damn uh, <laughs> card in the, in the thing, and thank goodness we had... I, I had such a talk with him, and he had such an interest. I love people. I yes. love people. I talk to everybody, uh, probably to a fault, maybe, because a lot of people just sit quietly, but I always get in conversations uh. with people. And he was from Africa, but he was very yes. interested in politics, and to where I was thinking, well, you know, you might be interested in doing a program. And so we exchanged telephone numbers, Beautiful. and thanks, it did, because I left my damn card in the machine, because I'm an absent-minded professor type. Right, right, I left right. it there, and he had my number, so he was able to call me and get the card back to fantastic. me. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. So that's a nice story that could have been made into a little movie. A thing. movie. It could have been a little vignette, right? Where's Steven Spielberg? Let's yeah, get him on the phone. Yeah. Get him on the phone. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. that's enough of, uh, yeah, right, yeah. anyway, yeah. But that is, I think, important, because you talk to people, I talk to people. Mm. We're trying to keep alive the humanistic spirit. I don't like it when I walk into a cafe, everybody's on the laptop today. There's a silencing in our culture. I think we need to keep alive the human spirit. Or the smartphone. Or the smartphone. Everybody's on smartphones now. It's good in Do many- Do you have a smartphone I yet? don't have a smartphone, I'm holding out. You crossed over, you have a smartphone. I only just got the damn <laughs> thing. I don't know how to make it work. I need a 12 year old. You and know? that nice lady downstairs was helping you yeah, use it. That young lady was helping you. Everybody seems to know how to work them, you know. Yeah. They know but anyway, I'm, yeah, okay, but never mind. We're going astraight. This is Fun. not about me, this is about Thank your you. thing. And also, Thank you, <coughs> yeah. you're going to be talking with him, and then also you've got this interest in. Uh, your program is going here. Thank you. We, let's just make a quick uh, plug, as it were, for sure. that. When does it air and everything? And um, It airs Thursday at 5 o'clock Thursday. On Time okay. Warner Cable Channel 34, mm -hmm. but it's you know also on and YouTube. And it's streamed to the Internet Through at the, the same internet, time. Yeah. Worldwide. High definition. Worldwide. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Um, and also, you can watch us on YouTube, so if you Google Public Voice Salon, you'll find us. And we encourage you people to. You have them all up on YouTube? We have some of them. Yeah, we're getting to them. And uh, Why don't you have them all up? I we're trying. Have. We're working on it. Is we it just a matter of being a little bit behind the technologically? Or well, something? here's the problem. Time is of the essence. Our show is a nonprofit. Yeah. We haven't monetized yet, so mm -hmm. we're looking for grants, and we're looking for that to have plenty of money so that Claudia can quit her day job. Mm. Her day job That's is necessary. That's a metaphor for the human society. Yeah. How many people are looking for something that can make it possible to get rid of your day job, yes. which is how you pay the rent and buy right. food for the kiddies and things, by and large, for most people, and be able to be liberated? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think... Um, do you realize what a tremendous statement that I know, is? I know. Is that possible? Absolutely. It you is, think it is, is possible for the human society? Uh, I think there's enough uh, resources to go around if it was distributed yeah. more equitably and we had a shorter work week. All right. How about zero? <laughs> zero work week? Okay, I'm with you. No, I don't know. I'm just no. saying that, uh, that uh, yeah, yeah. There's a famous quote by Mark Twain or something like, work is very overrated or don't work if you can avoid it or something. Uh, oh, yeah. Mark, Mark yeah. Twain said something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Mark Twain was just great. There yeah. is yeah, work that needs to get done. I'm not an economist. I don't pretend to be an economist, mm -hmm. but I think the economy could be reconfigured in a more humanistic way that yeah. people would not be overworked. When I actually ran for president in 2012. You did, uh -huh, really? I was calling on a- That would be an experience, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was calling on a 25-hour uh, work week because then people would right, not be a so- a lot of time wasted on work. You think it's too long, no. but there are people on the right and conservatives who would say that's, that's oh, no, too no, little. No, no, it, it's that, not, it's not uh, we shouldn't joke about it, because that's the main way in yeah. which people get a sense of identity of what they do, right. what do you do and everything. Exactly. And it's very, very important to people's consciousness and a sense of responsibility also to not be a wastrel. So I tell my students to go for their biggest dream. Uh, that's the first thing I do in day one of class. Do you think that's wise? 
I, I think I think it is. I think because people get trapped into things that they don't like, and it's not them, and it's not their identity. You think, huh? Oh yeah, it happens all the time. Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> follow the yellow brick road. But I'm wondering, but do you think people could be led, led astray to where they then don't have the means to have uh, elementary sustenance that is necessary for the security to be able to be doing things, you know? Well, that, that, um, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's a complicated question it because is, there a is huge work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not an economist. Right. I don't pretend to be an economist. Mm -hmm. And I just want to help people to grow um, more uh, psychologically, uh -huh. to be able to express themselves better, mm. to create a society that has a greater uh, sense of community. All uh, right. Okay. Uh, that's all to the good, yeah. And I think, I think Hollywood and the movies that we watch, the culture we consume mm -hmm. has a great impact on our, our politics, on that's our sense of what's possible. Yeah. Now, uh, Roseanne has a show now uh, which is, uh, and she is a... Uh, Roseanne was a, yeah, right. Big show back in the 1980s, yeah, right, okay? Right. So she's back on the air. She's got a lot of viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, the ratings were very high. Uh, Trump is very happy about that because she's a Trump supporter. Yeah, that's odd because most of the people in show business are not. And it's, yeah. it's strange about yeah. that. But I think it also show, it shows you the power of culture. Yeah. The power of movies to influence people, whether it's television. Oh, by or, all or means, that's multimedia. Yeah. And I'd just yeah. say a, a quick little plug or something. Okay. We're in multimedia here in a right, small right. way compared to, let's say, Metro Goldwyn Mayer or okay. something <laughs> like that, or even you know the networks. But uh, multimedia is a new kid on the block. Mm. In terms of the mm. human condition, mm. literature's been there since you know. Mm. Uh, somebody wrote down what Mr. Shakespeare had to say, but that's the way it's been passed on. Mm. But the uh, multimedia is only a thing of just recent experience, really. You know. There's a great, great quote. They had to g well, yeah, but you see, they had to get the telegraph, and then they had smoke signals, and how can you communicate in a telephone, and all these inventions that yes. came along. Uh, which made for the modern condition, maybe it's changing things, uh, one of which might be not such a strong commitment to the, uh, the, the, the what James Joyce called the, uh, the, uh, the tyranny of uh, bind bondage to the uh, phonetic alphabet and the logic that follows on that. that there was a lot of critique of that. We're going multimedia now. Mm. Increasingly, but it's just re it's only just yesterday, really, in terms of the human experience. Well, I, I'm very concerned, Harold, about the loss of democracy in our country now. You and are. I am, I am. Mm -hmm. There was a, a Princeton University study a couple of years ago that said America is no longer a functioning democracy, that the will of the average people is not being expressed in Congress, that big money is corrupting is controlling the, the political discourse. I think it always know. has, actually, right. to tell you the truth, but it's become more so, yeah. All right, so w I, I'm not one to bury my head in the sand and be in despair. Yeah. We need to fight and struggle. The young people are on the streets now. You uh -huh. saw that last week. They're fighting on the gun issue, mm -hmm. and they've found their voice. They've become very articulate. When I see those students, Harold, I think that these are my students. Yeah, wasn't that amazing? These are my students, okay? The, when I teach, I always teach for justice, for peace, for love. How do we create a better society? Yeah. Go out there and do something, yeah. protest, speak at a public meeting. Mm -hmm. My father was an actor when he was a young man. Was he really? And uh -huh. he, he had a big shot at fame and fortune with Chester Morris. Chester Morris, who was yeah. A, he was a Hollywood star who wanted my father to come on the road with the Cain Mutiny Court Martial play. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. my father said no to that because he just got married mm -hmm. and he wanted to be a stable married man. Well, that's and what I is called responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. And I do respect him for that. And mm -hmm. the, Okay. But on the other hand, it's like he says, I could have been a contender. Yeah. You know, you have that, yeah. the lost dream Isn't that aspect, a great scene? Is right? that in the cab? It is was that in the cab when Marlon says that? Yeah. I could have been, been a contender. contender. Yeah. I could have been somebody. Yeah, but I can't do him like he I can know, do him. Know, you know, he could right, really right, do right, him right, not right, like right. I can't. He was do a hell know, of an I, actor. I yeah. was driven yeah. to my... It's I was a great skill. Yeah. I was driven to my first acting audition mm. by a man named Tony Amato, who was an actor, Okay. who was also a boxer. Yeah. 
professional boxer yeah. who taught Marlon Brando how to fight no and, kidding. For On the Waterfront. Really? He wow. was a Hoboken guy, yeah. character. Yeah. He went on the set of On the Waterfront and he showed Marlon Brando a few moves. Wow. He was also Burt Reynolds' private bodyguard. Oh my gosh, And right. he was a stuntman who worked on The French Connection and movies like that. Yeah. He was in The Godfather. Remember The Godfather? Yeah, of course. Which uh, one? There's a bunch. Well, remember yeah. when they shot Sonny in the toll booth? Oh my God, that's such a scene, it's unbelievable. He was one of the guys. One of the guys that did this the shooting? This guy, Tony Amato, who he was did one of the He, he was the one of the shooters in the toll booth yeah. who shot the thing. Oh, he was in the toll he booth, was not in, in the other car. He was car. in the toll booth. He was oh, in the they had guys in the car in front of him, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. He also was in Donnie Brasco. Mm. You know don't Donnie Brasco? Don't know. Al Pacino and Don Johnny Depp. It's a mafia movie. Yeah, right. And he played the big godfather. Yeah. He played him. Uh, yeah. But here's a guy who drove me to my very first acting audition. Yeah which to me, I'm honored by that because he also has a connection to On the Waterfront. I just heard you were driven to your first edition. Audition. Do you have, do you, no, audition, do you yeah. have audition, but do you have inspiration or aspiration to become an actor? I was discouraged. Uh, is, okay, I, I was dis uh, because you're obviously interested I am, in am. I am an actor. I'm and an you actor. could be a candidate. I consider myself an actor in my own life. Okay. Yeah, I no, I I'm understand an actor what you're saying. That, that, that I can understand. I, I see the world as like a big movie. It's a stage. Yeah, right. Shakespeare, yeah, it is, you know, yeah. it's Shakespeare just, we're on, it, we're right, on yeah. the stage of our lives yeah, right, right, right now, okay? Uh -huh. yeah. You, when I saw you this afternoon and you were, I got to call this cab driver, I left my thing there and the, and well, the cab. Well, I lost my it's a credit drama. card. It's a, you know? it's, yeah, it's a story. We're yeah, in the middle right. of a story. Yeah, and why? Because you chose to talk to this man. See, you talk to strangers. I talk, talk to everybody, you know, <laughs> I mean, and I find everybody That's interesting. beautiful. Yeah. No, it's not. I, I probably interfere with people's reveries sometimes, uh, but I don't think very often. you got to have a feel for it. Every little child will talk to you without any question, you know? You know Maybe talks, they should learn not to talk to strangers, but, I yeah, I have a tendency to be <laughs> verbose, I guess, yeah. I want to give a shout-out to my friend Pat Cooper, who's a... Yeah, but I don't want to get away from the fact of your aspiration of, of thespian aspiration. Here's what I want to say right now. I want If to it relates particularly okay. to your thing about film. Do you know Pat Cooper? I don't know the name He's I'll a have. great comedian yeah. from Brooklyn, New York. Stand-up or Stand -up, what? Stand-up, yeah. Comedian, one of the funniest guys, people yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. He was on our show four years ago. Yeah. He's become a friend. Yeah. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. Lives on the Upper West Side. Right. He's not performing anymore on stage. Okay. But he loves to talk to people. Yeah. He'll talk to you in a diner. Well, he sounds like familiar to me. And yeah. He, and we'd he, probably get along you fine. Guys we'd would close the place uh, down. You yeah. would close. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But you know how he started his career? I'll tell I you. I don't know. I'd Driving a Brooklyn taxi. Okay, well, okay. And yeah. talking to his customers. Yeah, right. And making them laugh. And watching the traffic, I hope. Yes. yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can talk. And, and, and you know how I lost my job at the bank? Uh, you had a job at the bank? I, I didn't get that. Bank. What a job did you have? I had a lot of jobs. Yeah. I uh, one of my early jobs yeah. before I found my true voice and vocation. And as then you as went a, to university. As an though. educator, yeah. You did that before you went to education? Did you go straight from high school into education, or did you have a little time floating around? In your 1984. Road? I don't mean to pry, but I, I'm just curious. Okay. In 1984, I studied broadcasting. That was going to be my my career right. as a broadcaster. Yeah. Okay, I stayed in Stratford, Connecticut. Well, this is broadcasting in a way. I, we are. It? I yeah. finally yeah, got yeah. full circle back. Yeah. But um, I studied this in Stratford, Connecticut, at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Uh huh. And you know, Stratford is also the sister city of Stratford on and on. Stratford with Shakespeare, on England. Shakespeare, yeah. England. Yeah. With yeah. Stratford. So I studied there in uh, that. But I, for some reason, I never pursued a career. And I've been thinking about that, and I've been talking to my analyst also about this. Why didn't I just go right into broadcasting when I studied it in my 20s? Follow the crowd. There's all kinds of young people who want to become a star. And that's why. And get into show business. Follow the yellow brick road. And it's not good advice if you want to be solidly connected to <laughs> sources of income. Okay. Because most of the people, do you <laughs> understand? It, it's not responsible. Okay. Um, if I could finish this sentence. Put loose and fancy <laughs> free. No, no, no. Get a gig. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Is what your grandfathers and mothers would I say. Know. And yeah. we have to disobey that if yeah. we're going to become ourselves. Well, I don't know that necessarily. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we didn't have to? Okay. If everybody could pursue <laughs> really their own real interest and be free to do it without being totally destitute because okay. the society won't recognize 
a sense of freedom or of creativity even in the human okay. being because everybody's very creative i find every little kid they're absolutely creative as a okay. kiddo but they get uh, they get uh, sidetracked by the necessity of earning a living well and then you have a career connected yeah. around that and everything but those things are probably going to have to be bypassed <coughs> or incorporated in a system that would allow for the whole of the human society to be able to live a life of um, what it is they want to do rather than what they have to do. Most of humanity has been told what they have to do, particularly from outright slavery down to wage slavery and the rest of the thing. They can't make decisions for what they would like to do because that's not possible, but maybe it is becoming possible for more of the human society, maybe onto all of us, being able to do what they really want to do rather than what they're made to do by a system that requires them to okay. be quarry slaves in a certain in many cases or uh, you know followings on that and aren't quite so nasty as a quarry slave but essentially a, a slave to the people who have all the power and money now when i see my analyst on Monday, yes the <laughs> first <laughs> thing i'm going to say is i'm going to say to my analyst yeah. i'm going to say you know i was in the middle of a story <laughs> and harold channer jumped uh, all over the story and he and he interrupted my story i'm sorry and and uh, but i love harold yeah, channer no, i I'm love sorry. harold yeah. channer he's a beautiful man and i love him but answer love the question you. but i want to go <laughs> if you would sir answer the question is it possible that human <laughs> liberation is in the wings ready to be understood and tested in a way that has never been available to us given the material condition in which we found ourselves over 200,000 years of our existence. Okay, I want to go back to my story though okay, first, by and all then I'll, I'll go around to by that. By all means. But I, what I was saying was, after I studied broadcasting, yeah. and uh, for whatever reason I didn't pursue the career, I've been looking back it's now. It's overcrowded. Okay, l if mm. I could just. Sorry, sorry, I, sorry, want, I, I have a theory, Harold. Okay, I, wanna, I have I a theory, that's <laughs> yes, right. Okay, yes. And my theory is yeah. this, okay, that I want it to be unique. I want it to be original. And when I look at broadcasting, I see a lot of generic people. Yeah. I see the cookie <coughs> cutter, the, the empty suits, you know. I couldn't see myself in that. It wasn't until I became a teacher yeah. that I feel like I became a person. Okay. And I became my it's own a, it's self. It's an admirable profession. Yeah. yeah. Now I felt like I have something yeah. to say. Yeah. Let me have a talk show now. Yeah. So now, you know, that's I That's how you got into public that's voice, how I right? I got into yeah. public voice. Yeah, I right. call myself Good. A, teacher with a talk show. Yeah, okay. I'm not just a generic. I don't interview people. Uh-huh. I have dialogues. Right. So yeah. I listen and I respond and I talk I and I learn from you, Harold. Really? You are yes, you're what very you got to learn from I learn me. from you because oh, you know heaven help you. I mean you can't you do better uh, than me? Uh, let me just say this about Charlie Rose. I love no, Charlie I love, Rose. I love great. Charlie Rose. He got caught on the sex. And I feel them. sad about Charlie Rose now no. because I read in the paper the other day that he was eating dinner in a restaurant in New York at a fa Rose. fancy restaurant yeah, yeah. and he was eating by himself. Yeah. He was sitting there alone eating his dinner. Well, maybe, and yeah. I, I, I find that very touching and very poignant because... It does, ca it, ca it, it, it certainly can a be. A man yeah. who was interviewing all these people, yeah. but did he really... Doing it very well. He was very well informed. But was he connecting with them? I think often, yeah. Or was he sharing himself? I, I, I always wanted, Charlie, talk about yourself. I want to hear your life. I want to hear your <laughs> thoughts. I want to hear your <laughs> stories, you know. And I wrote Charlie Rose two letters, you know, <coughs> and he mm -hmm. hasn't responded. Maybe I'll write him again, you know. Maybe he's got more time now. I'll write him again. <laughs> but uh, he's someone I'd like to sit down <coughs> and have a conversation with. A he's dialogue. very informed. He's a very dialogue. Informed. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference between a dialogue and an interview. Yeah, by all means. An yeah. interview, you, in an interview, you put someone up on a pedestal and you go like this and <coughs> you kind of you reify them and you turn them into a monument or something. No. But a real dialogue is what you had with the cab driver today. You turned to that cab driver and you had a back and forth and there was no status or privilege it was just two human beings even, having a, even a, friends with stokely carmichael see you learned you got something out of that interaction you know <laughs> i don't know who i'm going to talk to <coughs> you okay harold Have yeah a, uh, yeah I'm, i think i'm all right thanks. when i leave here today i'll go yeah. to a cafe and yeah. i'll 
maybe have a conversation with somebody that will be unpredictable. Yeah, right. It is the most glorious yeah. theatrical thing in the world is yeah. a real human conversation. I believe you, you can't right. predict it. Yeah. Joe Franklin taught me that. Yeah. Joe Franklin. Joe he, Franklin was the, was, the, was the champ. Yeah. He created the first TV talk show yeah. in 1950. Do you know ABC didn't want to do it? Mm -hmm. ABC said, Joe, that's a terrible idea. It's going to fail. People don't want two people talking to each other, okay? Mm -hmm. He defied them, and he created the first TV talk show. Now, Joe Franklin became my dear friend. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Right, and mentored me, <coughs> praised us on the air, gave us support yeah. for what we were doing, mm -hmm. and the dearness of that man, the yeah, sweetness was, of that guy. He was so, a great guy. And yeah. he said to me, you know, he says, I never prepare for a conversation. It's like a dinner party. Yeah. Do you prepare for a dinner party? You know. Well, people do. You do some, some preparation. People. Or you if you have a script, you have a script you have to follow. I'm trying to get mm -hmm. people to talk to each other in yeah. our society. Okay. Uh -huh. I want people on buses to turn to each other and say, "Hi, how are you?" you I'm your guy. I mean, I do it all <laughs> the time. Yes. Right. You know. Right. I meet more interesting people. I swear to God. So to go back to you said, "Am I an actor?" I'm an actor in my own life. Yeah. And that's the title of my one-man show. An actor in my own life. Uh, uh, it's called yeah. "How to Be an Actor in Your Own Life." No kidding. You and got that. You've done that. It? Was a show that I premiered. Is this better, Josiane? Okay, dear. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful. Let's yeah, give Josiane a round of applause. She's beautiful. Oh, Hooray! Hooray for and the people who really put things together. Yes. And, and Cover and all hey, the mistakes. Everybody. Would be lost without yes. her. Yes. And, all right, enough of that. And everybody yeah. at, uh, at, at this MNN. Yeah, Molly, and M Molly, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. MNN is a major institution. And public access is a major good idea. And may it thrive. And it may do well. It may do very, very well in the time ahead. I have. Uh, reason to believe, yeah. And whoever the politician was who helped to make this happen, I think it was Liz Holtzman. George Stoney. Well, George Stoney. George was. Stoney was the force that made this place possible. Can we toast to George Absolutely. Stoney? Absolutely. God bless him. Stoney. He was a giant, giant of a, mm. a film. His films were fantastic, mm. and he was beautiful. And he had some, he had some association with the real world. You Correct. know, like the major Correct. players. He was know, at NYU. Couple, he knew all the political leaders and sure. so forth. And yeah. so do you, Harold. You've had some nah, major shows. Some, yeah. Major some. shows. Casper Weinberger yeah. you had? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know who you had? I envy this. Uh, you had the guy, um, the Hollywood guy. You had the Hollywood guy. I don't know who Hollywood Head of the MPAA, Motion Picture Association of America. Jack, was it Valente? What was his well, name? I think maybe we did a thing with Valente. Val well, was yeah, Valente. Yeah, 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 we did a program with him. Where the hell yeah. yeah, Yeah, with a lot of people. Yeah. But so anyway, enough of me. Okay. Yeah, you were, you were, you were, you were, you were along a line. This is all you, about me now. Yeah, I want yeah, this let's to be talk about, about me. you. Yeah, no. It's let's my talk. ego. No. Like Trump. I'm going to tweet this out. and He's like something, <laughs> a comic opera or something like that in terms of the way he just goes off. I, I'm worried about him. I, I'm yeah. worried about him. I'm worried <clears throat> what I would be worried about having some uh, um, yeah. some uh, association with, say, recent history and so forth. Is that the, the ugly, f the ugly voice or the ugly face yeah. of fascism? Fascism. It makes me think of Berlusconi mm -hmm. or or maybe Mussolini mm. or the big guy. Well, I Edo. think the whole issue goes back to democracy and education. Uh, John Dewey was a great educational He philosopher. sure was. He okay. was the di dean, yeah. If you look at our television show, we mention John Dewey a lot. Over, mm -hmm. the, you know, over the eight years of our show, we make constant references to Dewey. Do you really? Good for you. That's right. He should be recognized. Yeah, right. Demo Absolutely. Democratic Good. pedagogy, you know. Uh -huh. And in two weeks, there's going to be the John Dewey Society is going to have its annual they meeting. They have that, do they? In New really? York City. Good. At the Crown Plaza Hotel in Times Square. Really? And I'm going to go for my first time ever to the John Dewey Foundation. You haven't been there before? I've never been to their annual meeting. Are you associated with them? I was a mentored by Maxine Green. I don't know who Maxine is. She was, a, she yeah. was the heir to Dewey. Uh -huh. And she, she lived what, to be nine. Intellectual heir? Intellectual heir to Dewey, yeah. She John was, Dewey? She was, yeah. John, Maxine Green, arguably, you could argue that Maxine Green. God, that's a huge uh, thing to follow. She was called the Philosopher Queen of Teachers College. God bless her. Yeah. She died a couple of years ago at the age of. She was an acquaintance of yours? Yeah, we, I used to go to salons in her house. Oh, did you really? We, we would go to. She Boy, would, those are things that make wor life worth living. I was they? like yeah. the hick from New Jersey. I'm yeah. like, what am I doing? Somebody's got to do it. Pinch Somebody's me. I'm like this. Uh, uh, yeah. But you know, 
I'm going to tell you about Maxine and the intellectual circle around her. They okay, were very please. caring people. Yeah. They were extreme. They're extremely bright, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, yeah. PhDs in literature yeah. and all, mm -hmm. but also very caring and loving and kind people. Right. And they made me, they helped me find my voice as a teacher mm -hmm. and as a writer yeah. and as a thinker. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I try to empower my students, yeah. but I find increasingly that it, educational administration has g is getting in the way of my teaching, right? The bureaucrats are taking over the school systems. Yeah. So, yeah, as yeah. a result, I've taken my show on the road, and mm. here we are with the TV show, Public Voice Salon. Yeah, right. I'm developing one-man shows, uh -huh. plays. That's um, in addition to what you do here, right? In addition to that, and yeah. I'm giving a lecture Oh, good. On April 26th. Let me, which hold uh, up where can we can. hold it, honey? Like this? Can I hold it? Can you get to it? There you go. Right. Come this right is in a tight on that. Title: Imagine a Hollywood for the Greater Good. Good idea. Uh, okay, and you can see that's Warren Beatty in Bullworth, mm -hmm. one of my favorite yeah, well movies. Well, that is a tricky movie. It's fabulous, funny. fabulous funny, movie. Funny, funny, yeah. The great Amiri Baraka was also in that movie. Uh -huh. uh, this is a movie I showed to my students many times, give uh -huh. them a sense of what's possible in terms uh -huh. of politics in uh -huh. the future. Uh -huh. And of course, we have Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Wonderful, isn't it? Wonderful yeah. movie yeah. about Jimmy speaking Stewart, truth yeah. to power, yeah. getting up and saying your truth and going against the big guys yeah, and not right. being afraid. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically it. That's the lecture I'm going to be giving at the Symposia Bookstore in Hoboken. When now? Put uh, it down. We'll, we'll let people know. When April, April 26th at 6 p.m. Okay, we're gonna have light refreshments there, and my talk is going to be basically the opening of a dialogue. I'll right. speak for about a half hour or so, uh -huh. and then invite the community mm -hmm. to brainstorm. Is that part of your public me. salon thing? A continuation? No, this of is that? not going to be filmed. This, this is not going to be filmed. No, no. This is not, you're be not going to film it. No, I, sure I, may, I, may, I may to decide to film on this topic in the future. I think it's a good topic for a roundtable. What right? is the topic again? Imagine a Hollywood mm. for the greater good. Uh, that's really, that's, for, say it again. Imagine a Hollywood for the greater good. That's something that could really go on a bumper sticker or something. Yeah. Or, so or, 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 you know, that's the thing that could uh, catch, uh, catch uh, the public not knowledge. Thank or you. Public attention, yeah. I only found Say out it again. Imagine. Now with feeling. Okay. Now with feeling. No imagine feeling. a Hollywood for the greater good. God, you're a baritone. <laughs> are you singing? Are you a singer already? Is it no? How no. about hooray for Hollywood? Da 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 da. Hollywood. That's all I know. That's, <laughs> That's the only song I know. I'm not going to be a song and dance man. I used to dance like crazy when I was young. Maybe we'll take this on the road. Yeah. Well, no, that's an idea. I'm glad you've let people know about that and that you're doing it. We're doing that. Are you doing that sort of thing often, yes. or is this pretty rare? I'm or is this a this first? I'm going on tour. Is this, this is a first? Yes, this is a first. Good. Everybody, uh, let's encourage the young man. The young man is trying to become a really major figure in terms of the theater. He wants to become a, a life in the theater, and I think we uh, we owe it. To the uh, to the <laughs> to all of the, all the thespians to support one another and let's give this young man oh, a hand you. and oh. a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a leg up in terms of uh, who knows where that could lead. I'm just playing with you. I yeah? paid him a lot to say. <laughs> that. I did not. I, I lost the money. I lost. It. I lost in a crap game. You know. Yeah. Uh, um, mm -hmm. So I want to go back now to when I was talking about my grandmother. Yeah, please. And Grandmothers are worth talking about. God bless grandmothers. Yes. Yeah. She told me the fairy tale stories. Um, and then she would tell me this incredible story about how she was in an orphanage in London. Yeah. And this great actress saved her, rescued her, brought her to America, brought mm -hmm. her to New York. Um, my grandmother would sing to me when I was a little boy. Yeah. She had the theatricality in her. Yeah. You uh -huh. know. Yeah. Now, Blanche Walsh <coughs> yeah. was a great star of the stage. She was the original advocate of a national theater, of an American national what theater. What do we have closest to that nothing. now? We nothing. We have nothing. nothing we yeah. came close in the 30s yeah. with the yeah. Federal Theater Project yeah. under uh -huh. FDR. You yeah. had this idea of uh, actors out of work 
putting them to work with directors. It was called the Federal Theater Project. Yeah. That's where Orson Welles came out of. Also, the the uh, George Theater. Stoney came out of uh, association out of with those people. And okay. he made magnificent films in support of uh, Thank Franklin Roosevelt's oh. trying to help the people who were desperately hurt by the Great wow. Depression. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was a major filmmaker. And the films he made, oh. he, he, he was with the Canadian Film Board and so forth, but the films that he made, they weren't just a piece of schlock or something like that. Mm. They were really like good, oh. well put together yes. films that were, were worthy of Hollywood. He would make them in support of right. the poor people who had mm. been so badly treated by the Great Depression, which had just been a trauma in this country, yeah. And for that, he's to be honored. Yes, yeah. yes. So to go back to Blanche Walsh, yes. She was the original advocate of a national theater, mm -hmm. um, which she actually got from her friend Mark Twain. Friend of Mark Twain? Yeah. And she was a going nobody. around giving lectures. Whatever, but didn't she know anybody that had a real reputation for writing? I'm making a joke. I'm trying to do it. See, I'm not a very good comedian, you know. <laughs> we got to mm. get you with Pat Cooper. Mark he'll, he'll Twain? Train you. Yes, who is Mark that? Twain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, go Huckleberry ahead. Huckleberry who? Yeah, no. right, yeah. So now here's something I only found out a couple of months ago, okay? Yes. Uh -huh. A friend of mine gave me a book on, um, uh, on uh, Sam Goldwyn. So I read the great Sam Hollywood Goldwyn's fame, yeah. biography, all right? Yeah. Metro and Goldwyn Mayor, yeah. Uh -huh. So in this book, I discovered something about this actress that I didn't know, Blanche yeah. Walsh, my grandmother's second mother, uh -huh, part uh -huh. of our family. Yeah, I right. wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. Yeah, interesting. She yeah. was in one movie mm -hmm. in 1912. Boy, way back. A movie yeah. called Resurrection, based on Tolstoy's third novel. Okay. It was uh -huh. Tolstoy's most provocative, uh -huh. most political novel, mm. and it was his best-selling book. Mm -hmm. And they made a play out of it in 1903. Yeah, and, and in a film? She starred in the play version of it, Blanche Walsh, uh -huh. in 1903, and in the film version. But that was the film that really was the first feature film. Uh, no kidding. It was, yeah, before Are that. Are you serious? Yeah, huh? you know who did that was mm -hmm. Adolf Zucker. Yeah, Zucker. Adolf yeah. Zucker was a Hungarian immigrant. Yeah. Came to Great New York. Great filmmaker. He yeah. made money in the fur business. Yeah, yeah. Then he got into these um, penny arcades. Yeah. And his idea was that audiences were ready for a full feature movie. Before that, movies were very short. They yeah, were like yeah. one reel, two reel, yeah. something like that. They were like, you know, uh, Billy Bronco jumps on a yeah. horse. That was the extent, you yeah. know. So Zucker said, no, I, th I think audiences want a full story with plots similar to a novel uh -huh. and similar to a play, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So he stars mm -hmm. Blanche Walsh in yeah. Resurrection. Mm -hmm. She became his first movie star. I'll She's the dead. first American movie star, and it happens to be a very radical movie. Now, are you going to make that available in some sort of a form? You're, are you going to be uh, doing a, uh, are you going to, uh, uh, that's very interesting, It'd make a heck of a biopic or something like that in terms of, because film and multimedia yes. is probably going to become much more respected in all of the time ahead because I think that's the way in which the world is trending toward improving no, to, to improving yeah. the respect for and the support for what is called multimedia communication yes. oh, yeah. of the store of human knowledge, even as it relates to even political and economic uh, organization of the planet. I mean, multimedia is just mm. I I is a golden era ahead of us, you know? Mm. And the, 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 the pioneers of that are to be celebrated by all means, yeah. Mm. And if I could just go back to Tolstoy for a second. By all means. Uh, Tolstoy, who wrote this novel that took him 10 years to write, mm -hmm. uh, that was based on a true story yeah. about a young lady who um, was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was um, basically uh, a peasant, you know, young gal. Most people were. Uh, in Russia, yeah. um, suffering, part mm -hmm. of the lower underclass of Which Russia. Which was almost everybody. Yeah. So now for the most part, Tolstoy had a great sensitivity for the peasants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he created the first progressive school on his property because he wanted to give education to the peasants. A uh, who, who? Peasants. No, who did that? Tolstoy. Tolstoy. Did he He's did actually it? the first progressive well, educator. Didn't know that, really. And his classes didn't have didn't have grades. They didn't have bells. That sounds People like People could come heaven, and go. Yeah. It sounded like one of your classes. Yeah, 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 you know. yeah. So Tolstoy was this great 
educator. It wasn't really a class. It was just a meeting of a bunch of people. Right, right. But we were pretty irreverent and about your the institutional in structure of things. Tolstoy, ahead, yeah. Tolstoy was also a pacifist. I don't know if you know that. I did, by all means. Yeah, he's Tolstoy recognized for that. was influential in influencing Gandhi. because Not they, a small matter. They corresponded. Yeah. And then Gandhi influenced Martin Luther King. So yeah. you can draw a direct lineage between Tolstoy to Gandhi to Martin Luther King. Now, Resurrection was his great novel of social justice okay. and love. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's a quote in Resurrection where he says that Love is the fundamental law of human life. It comes from resurrection. Well, may it be so, yeah. Because this young peasant who was a prostitute who got mm -hmm. accused of a crime she didn't commit, mm -hmm. she's on a jury trial, and one of the men on the trial is a wealthy aristocrat named Nikolodov, and he recognized her as mm -hmm. a woman he seduced mm -hmm. many years ago, yeah. and he abandoned her, uh -huh. and now he feels guilty. Mm. that he destroyed her life. So how did that whole story end the up? St the story ends up that she gets sent to Siberia, mm. and he feels so guilty. He'll do anything he can to get her so out of jail. So what does the schmuck he, do? Even what he, did he, he do said, do I'll man? marry you, I'll oh. do anything. Mm. And so that the novel is an exploration of the human soul yeah. and of guilt and of love. So how does it all come out in the end? How does the movie injustice, end? Social mm. injustice. Social injustice. Yeah. It's about that. and and. Uh, <laughs> Henry George, you know Henry George? Of course, a great theoretician of uh, economics. economics. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. one of the one of the great, um, really one of the great people of the progressive era, Henry George. Absolutely. He yeah. was the yeah. first person to recognize the ninety nine percent. A hundred years before Occupy Wall Street, Henry George was a champion. Of I think it was the same of the downtrodden, of the yeah. economically deprived. Yeah. So. Anyway, yeah, guess I what? I think that's always been the case Tolstoy, throughout human history. Yeah. Tolstoy loved Henry George. Yeah, okay, yeah. And he read his book. Mm -hmm. He read his book, yeah. Progress and Poverty, right, which was right. a best-selling yeah, book absolutely, in the yeah. 1870s. The century, yeah. Second only to the Bible. Uh -huh. Second only to the Bible, yeah, Progress and Poverty. Yeah. So Tolstoy yeah. read it, and guess what? He makes his main character an acolyte of Henry George. Does he, uh, he in what in what vehicle then? In this resurrection, the novel resurrection. Oh, resurrection. Okay, okay I don't now, know. Now, uh -huh. a couple of years ago, there's a, a short story writer named yeah. George Saunders, very popular short story writer. Mm -hmm. He wrote an essay about Tolstoy's resurrection, uh -huh. and you know what he said? No, what? Tell me. Tell he me. Tell me. He said he thinks that this sh this novel helped to incubate, helped to catalyze. The Russian Revolution in 1917. I'll be damned. Because Could it be. made it, people it, yeah. aware of yeah. the injustice. Yeah. So look yeah. at what a novel yeah. can do. The artists are often in the van. Yeah. Look at what a novel can do. Look mm. at what a movie can do. Yeah, absolutely. Increasingly, yeah. A movie like Bullworth, okay? Yeah, that is funny. We need it? a yeah. Bullworth of our time. Warren Beatty, where are you? Yeah. Come on. Spielberg, I want these guys to sit in a room and not leave until you come up with a film script yeah. that's going to get our country back on track. Because I think film is a great medium to reach a lot of I people I think quickly. it's destined to become, as I, I, I don't know yes. how to say it, but yes. I think we, um, <coughs> uh, I, I really liked, um, you know, um, uh, a lot of people who saw the, the major metaphor for the, uh, Marshall McLuhan, I used yeah, to visit. Yeah with him every, you spr did. every spring for a few years there and everything. Oh. And he, he wrote on uh, media and so forth. Where did and you m visit with him? Where? In Toronto. Oh, because wow. Because he was up in Toronto. We would go from New Paltz with my friend oh. uh, 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 to there and visit with him. Not n I couldn't get what they say in the Yiddish, Hamish. I couldn't do it. He was very uh -huh. different. You know, he's uh. very... Uh, austere. Yeah, but he was a major, a major writer of understanding the media, okay. which includes mil, fil, I mean, tele, print, and that's the thing that's been there since. Um, hmm. We don't have any way of knowing what the music sounded like to Caesar because we didn't have any notational system for putting down the music. We had nothing to record the music. We didn't right. have the record coming out of the past, uh, anything like that. But with the coming of um, of the new media, and what we're re what we're really going through is a transformation where our institutions are predicated upon the phonetic alphabet, one thing at a time, and specialization and so forth. We're we're being introduced into a 
environmental condition, uh, how long before it will be fully recognized as important as it uh, will become, in my estimation, uh, that the store of human knowledge, which the literature is, uh, libraries with sure. uh, stacks, remember stacks, going in stacks, the stacks of the library where you'd get yes. a thing and you'd get one little book and you'd come up and you'd read one little book. Now uh, the whole sto uh, the whole alphabet is available. But what is I you know, make, quick, I make the point? Let me make the yes. point. Okay. The, the 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 world is transiting from a world based upon the linear thinking of uh, the uh, phonetic alphabet by and large in the Western world to one where the store of human knowledge is going to be increasingly contained within multimedia presentations of film. And the one big step that's going to have to be made to make that universal is when we finally get around with the exponential increasing capability of the information technology, mm. which is now transmogrifying into robotics, which is going to have a profound effect upon the e economic order, but uh, where we will, tra we will be able to translate in real time the 7,000 languages of the world, one into the other, so that the store of human knowledge being portrayed in a, a presentation of, I don't know, mm. paleontology or whatever, can be conveyed to somebody in their no native language and you won't have to be reading anything. Yeah. It will be conveyed in Swahili to somebody in Tanzania. And you can educate the human population through the multimedia world. The store of human knowledge will be accessed through multimedia. So we're going through that transformation. And uh, that's something that's, uh, it is, it's, 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 uh, mm. it's confounding all of the institutional structures that have been based upon the alphabet and upon the linear organization of things. And that is all fundamentally transmogrifying in the time that you and I are maturing and the youth is coming up. So we live at a time of qualitative yeah. transformation, perhaps liberation of the human society and something that doesn't have precedent in all of the human society's history. But anyway, we only got about 30 seconds left That's now all? With all my rambling, you know. Oh, no, we got a full minute. You got a full uh, minute, so well, end it up. Um, Harold, I look forward to um, our conversations very much. I love it when you invite me on the show. I feel honored mm. to be your guest, and I think you're one of the great intellectuals of our time. Yeah, we I, don't I, have intellectual heroes in Hollywood. I think we're going to send you to Hollywood immediately. Well, I don't and think I would be minute. very well accepted George Clooney, there. hold it. George Clooney. I'd want everybody to do it on me. spec. George, you know? George Clooney, step aside mm. for this, oh, no, this cut man. It out. Cut it out. No, I'm yeah. serious. Yeah, no. I think he would step aside for you. Thank you, my you friend, but I don't think that makes very much sense. And now, if it only could get across <laughs> to all the people, you know, at, in the big, uh, the big shots in the movie. No, but it's, it's the store of human knowledge. Yeah. The, 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 the store of you, we, we had no way of presenting. It's now coming in multi-dimension, high definition, yes. incredible presentations of the whole store of information that could, could be fate. You need a soundtrack that can be picked up by everybody without going through the English language translation. Hooray for Hollywood. Hollywood. It could be. It could be Hollywood would be <laughs> certainly encoded in this yes, and everything. Yes, but yes. anyway, uh, trouble is we run out of time. We've run out of time. Good mixture. For this. this was an interdisciplinary discourse. You're bringing geology and science and economics. Yeah, but what we got to do is because we're coming to the politics end. Politics. We're coming to the end. We're coming well, to we the end. Other. The end. We the end. The end. We're going to come to the end. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for viewing. We're coming to the end. So oh, we have to talk about the end. Thank you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We'll be coming back again next week. John, thanks so much for coming. Coming to a theater near you. And let's thank Rose, Josie, and thank you, Josie. And let's forget Claudia. Claudia, God bless you. Claudia, love you, my darling. It's all your graphics you are the together. Best. You are it's the, the best. public graphics that are really uh, important yes. more than all this talk. D she's the all producer. Talk. Hey, yeah. she's the idea person also. I think we have to give more respect to the feminine principle. Claudia and the women yeah. of the world. The women of the world have to be respected fully, and they have not been. They've been treated like quarry slaves, I know. by and large, and that's got to end, right? I'm doing the dishes tonight, honey. Uh, okay. I promise. Okay. I'm doing